What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video. For today's video we're going to bring you another episode of just some horror news, then some other stuff that's been dropping lately in the horror community that I wanted to discuss and talk about in my last video that I did where I talked about some horror news that I actually did pretty well on the channel. So I was like, alright, let's do some more content like this. So today we're going to talk about the Crow trailer that dropped the Crow remake. So you're going to get my feelings on that trailer. We're also going to discuss Scream 7, of course. I know that's probably the biggest news that everybody wants to get to. We're going to discuss that. And we're also going to discuss Beetlejuice 2. They wrapped filming and they have a release date. So we're going to also talk the Beetlejuice 2 sequel. So that's a lot of fun. So there's some different news to discuss today. So I hope you all enjoy this video. Be sure to like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Let's me know that you want more videos like this. So let's get down to it. Roll it. Also, I want to take this time to plug a new series that I have coming up that's going to be starting on the channel very soon. I'm going to be having Steve from the Voices from Mausoleum podcast and the YouTube channel. He is going to be joining me to co-host along where we're going to be going along deep diving on the Courage, the Cowardly Dog TV show from the 90s, the early 2000s. I know that's a very old school show that probably just calls back to a lot of people's childhood. So we're going to be deep diving those episodes. We're going to be doing three episodes in each uh, segment or part that we discuss. So that's two segments per episode and part one is going to be dropping Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's this Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You're going to see that first episode drop and we're going to try to do it maybe as a, a bi-weekly thing. So every other uh, Wednesday we'll be dropping episodes like I said and you can follow along by streaming Cowardge the Cowardly Dog on HBO Max. So I know the big news that everybody wants to get to right away is Scream 7. Yes, Spyglass forked over a ton of money to get Nev Campbell to come back, and I'm pretty sure they're probably going to get Patrick Dempsey to come back. They want to finish off her story, Sydney Prescott's story, and man, this is one thing that I pretty much knew they were going to try to do this. There was no way they were going to be able to salvage anything of what happened between them and Melissa and Jenna and all that and stuff and what went down with them too. There was no way they were going to be able to salvage that. So the only way they were going to be able to do it is pretend like either those previous two films didn't exist at all and start a new timeline or bring back Sydney Prescott to finish out her storyline. So yes, this is going to be something that is it's kind of a hot topic right now because I know some people in the horror community that are talking about possibly boycotting this movie because they do not support spyglass and the people and what they do and the higher ups and everything and their you know their views on things which is very you know political stuff i try not to get into too much political stuff on this channel or anything like that so we're not really going to talk about that i just kind of want to talk about the movie and nev campbell coming back in general and my feelings on the film and if i'm going to see it like in all that stuff in theaters which is one thing that i'm, I'm such a completionist though and me I'm one of those people that really does separate the art from the artist. I'm able to do that like in a lot of moments and a lot of times. So this is probably going to be a movie I'm going to see. Am I going to see it in theaters? I don't know. I necessarily don't know right now. It really depends on how it looks, the trailer, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if it's going to be like I said, day one theater type thing. But in terms of the movie in general, I probably will see this movie because like I said, I'm a completionist. I have to know what they're going to do with Scream 7, how they're going to finish off the storyline and all that kind of stuff. And for me, it, I am very sad that they're not going to be able to carry on with Tara and Sam because I think they started off with Scream 5 and Scream 6. I think were really good launching points for these new characters and moving on from, you know, Sydney and Courtney, you know, and Courtney Cox's character and Dewey and all them moving on from the older generation. They really brought in these awesome new characters and it kind of sucks that we won't get a resolution to those characters. You could always look at it as Scream 6 is just the bookend to them. That when she drops the mask and she walks away from it, that's her final decision to not be like her father. And they ended the people that were like kind of coming after them and stuff. So you really could kind of look at Scream 5 and Scream 6 as just a Tara and Sam little storyline. Their timeline, it's over. Now we're back to Sydney. So creative wise, they could make it work. They could make it work, and they brought Kevin Williamson back, which is another thing. They teamed up bringing him back as well. So that's a big thing because he's, you know, was a writer for Scream 1, 2, 3, 4. He was there for all the major moments with Wes Craven. So bringing Kevin back is another big thing. But like I said, 
it's it's really down the tussle. It's kind of split horror community fans in terms of are they going to boycott this film? Uh, do they want to see this film and support it in theaters? Are they going to find another way to watch this film? Like, there's other ways to watch this film without being able to, you know, support Spyglass. Of course, we all know that there, those there's ways out there. But yeah, it's just something that me as a fan and as a cinema lover and a movie lover, I really do try to keep political views and stuff out of films and keep and separate the art from the artist as much as possible. Like I said, there are some instances where I don't possibly or I feel a certain way, but I, I do as much as can try to separate that. So that way I'm able to look at that because like I said, when it comes to a film, there's so many people that are involved with the film. So many people go like so much talent and so much, you know, work goes into it that it's kind of hard to just, you know, hux it on just one person and blame it on one person and have them ruin the whole thing for everybody else. You know what I mean? Now we're moving on to a lighter topic. Let's get away from that, <laughs> that feeling and stuff. And we're going to talk about the Crow trailer. And this one is one that for me, I had mixed feelings on it. Like I said, in terms of being the Crow remake, I don't hate the fact that they're trying to do it. I do. If you were to ask me, honestly, I would probably say that the Crow is a franchise that we could have done with just the first film. But I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't connected to that first film of Brandon Lee. They don't really grab onto that film or even like really call back to that movie. For me, that's a big film. That's a movie that I watched at a very young age. It's a movie I return to a lot. And it's a movie that has just this iconic way about it where it captured a moment in time. And I think that's why that first Crow stands the test of time is because it really did capture a moment in time. It's got a certain cast, a certain vibe about it. The soundtrack is fantastic. It's probably one of the greatest soundtracks that's ever graced a, a movie. So there's a lot of reasons to love that first Crow film, but I don't hate the Crow sequels either. I don't think we needed them, but I don't hate all the Crow sequels either. But this is the first shot and crack at a Crow remake. This is so Skarsgård is playing the Eric Draven character that Brendan Lee played in that first Crow movie from the 90s. And one thing I must say about the trailer is I like the fact that it is completely different. It doesn't look really anything like Brendan Lee's version at all. So I love that aspect. It looks like they're really focusing more on the relationship between Draven and his and the girlfriend character played by FKA Twigs in this version. They're really focusing on their relationship and it looks like she's going to be more of a character than she was in the 90s version. So I like the fact that it looks different. That's one positive for me. I think Skarsgård is a good enough actor that he's going to be able to do something with the role. The design of the character, uh, I, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's one of those like middle ground, mediocre things. Like I said, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just think they went kind of overboard. They went a little overboard with it. You know what I mean? I wanted to scale it back a little, scale it back a little. <laughs> but, you know, the trailer didn't over excite me or anything like that. But it didn't, like I said sour me on the idea this is this is still going to be a movie that i'm going to want to see probably in theaters or try to check out in theaters because i want to see it and like i said this is a big thing because they've never tried to take a swing at a crow remake before all the other ones are just crow sequels this is the first crack at a crow remake and like i said there could be promise but there also could be the fact that it looks like it might just be another generic revenge type flick and that it'll be one of those ones that you just watch it and then you end up forgetting it. And that is a great possibility that could happen with this movie. Now, last but not least, we have Beetlejuice 2. They finished wrapping. Yes, Tim Burton officially uh, talked about it. I believe it was like six or five days ago, did a report where he did an interview and said that they finished wrapping the film. So they're going to be, you know, doing all that post-production stuff and everything and editing and everything and trying to chop the film up. Apparently right now, I think this film is slated to come out in like the first or second week of September of this year. So I I'm really excited. We have, you know, a lot of returning characters like Catherine O'Hara's characters coming back. Winona Ryder, you know, Michael Keaton coming back. I don't know for sure if we have uh, Gina Davis and Baldwin coming back. I'm not too sure if we have them coming back for this role or this movie. But for real, this is a movie that I'm excited for because Beetlejuice is one that just calls back to a certain time in my life. Like a lot of people already know, if you were a fan of the channel and you watch the channel, I have a Beetlejuice themed guest bathroom so the first film is one that 
I probably watch like two or three times a year. I probably watch Beetlejuice two or three times a year. It gets watched pretty often, so I'm anxious to see the sequel. Do I want it to live up to the first one? Yes, I do. I really do want to be so hopeful and be like, it's going to live up to the first one. And I really want it to be its own thing. And I feel like they're going to be able to pull from the Beetlejuice TV show a little bit. They're going to be able to use a little bit of that nature and that comical nature from that TV show. And I really think that'll be pretty cool, like I said, to have Beetlejuice and Lydia, their relationship like that. We have the fact that I think Lydia is going to have a daughter character that Jenna Ortega is playing, you know, her daughter in this film. So there's a lot of elements to this movie that I said I'm very excited about. The cast has me excited. The fact that they did really want to commit to this idea and brought a lot of people back. I heard they're going to actually also, I think in that interview and in that story that Tim Burton talked about, they finished wrapping that they're actually going to return to an iconic scene from that first film. So there's, there's a lot of juicy stuff that, like I said, ideas and things that are, you know, getting me very excited for this one. And I got goosebumps and I can't wait to see the first set footage and like trailers and all that kind of stuff. Because like I said, this is one that... I'm going to be eager to see in another one that I'm probably going to be down to check out in theaters um, probably like the first or second week. I hope you all enjoyed this video of this fun news video of some horror news. Like I said, if you like these videos, please like the video, share, subscribe, all that jazz because that definitely helps out the channel. Like I said, that first one did very well. So I hope you all enjoy this just hearing my thoughts on some really cool horror news, fun facts and fun things that I heard, you know, in the community over the last few days. But be sure to Follow me. Like I said, I'll have my Facebook link, my X and like Twitter link slash whatever Twitter. I'll have those links down in the description so you can follow me. Make sure you have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I drop a video. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.